Broadcasting from Silicon Valley, California, this is Conversations with Jenny Lynn. Thank you for watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. As always, I look for the best people with the most amazing accomplishments and stories to share with you. And today we are in the UK and our guest has rubbed noses with the likes of former uh, Prime Minister of England, Theresa May, current Prime Minister of England, Boris Johnson. He has done so much that I can't spend the introduction telling you all of it because 30 minutes will be gone. So I will, I will allow him to share what I haven't shared with you and, to, and also how he managed or what he's doing that's allowed him the privilege of working alongside the prime ministers of England. His name is Councillor Shamad Kumar Jha. Welcome to Conversations with Jenny Lynn. Thank you so much, Jenny Lynn. It's so kind of you. So myself, Councillor Sharad Kumar Jha, I'm very happy to be here and so nice to not only meet you, but also my brothers and sisters of uh, America. And uh, the world has become such a uh, small place. The world is one. And now we are planning to build cities on Mars, Moon, and so many other places. Like we used to see in Star Trek, you press a button over here and go to another planet and enjoy over there. So basically, Thank you so much, America and the US and the whole world. And uh, uh, yes, in the sense, I started my journey, my childhood from a place called Jamshedpur, Tata Nagar, from where uh, the Tatas, the big industrialists, established their steel industry, textile. There are so many industries which they have started. And um, so my schooling was from there. And then I went to the capital city, Delhi University, and from there, I did MBA from a place known as City of Temples and in Human Resource Management. And then finally, I came to UK, London. And uh, over here, yes, I have been presently director of three companies. And I'm global advisor of around 15 companies, guiding them in the right direction. And I've been associated with British politics for quite a long time. And fortunately, I, with your best wishes, I got elected as a councillor for one of the beautiful green places based on the climate change and environment. If you come to my uh, city, it's absolutely green and full of nature. Like Albert Einstein had told, like, look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. So similarly, my area is wonderful, very beautiful. And uh, besides counselor, I am also a trustee of few charities. And uh, yes, I keep on doing so many things. But yes, the main factor is I love people. Like Nelson Mandela had told that real leaders must be ready to sacrifice all for the freedom of their people. So you are a person, people, the people around you are your energy. And that's give the synergy to go ahead and do something good in life. Thank you. What a great introduction. Thank you so much. And I agree, I love people. I love them so much that I try to find ways to help everyone to have a better life if I can. And one of the ways I do it is this show where I get to share people like you with them. Otherwise, the people that watch my show may not know you or you know that value you are adding to the world that could possibly encourage them to do something similar. And that's always my hope and my intention. So you have worked, uh, you have been in company of the former Prime Minister of the UK, Theresa May, and I have photographs of you with her as well as the Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Would you like to share with us? I know you're involved in the political arena in England, but would you like to share with us the occasions on which you have been working alongside those people? 
Absolutely. In fact, I have done uh, campaigning for Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Theresa May. She is so nice. Like I have been recently, just five days ago, we were campaigning for the member of parliament of our place, all in the spring clothes. It was lovely, all sunny. So yes, so nice people. And uh, basically, in fact, the prime ministers or all these bureaucrats or industrialists, even the common people, every person is common at the end of the day. So if you like connect yourself with the soul of another person at the end of the day, you are absolutely confident and internally you feel as if uh, uh, as a leader yourself. Like you remember, like in US, Abraham Lincoln had once told that common looking people are the best in the world. That is the reason the Lord makes so many of them. So at the end of the day, yes, it has been wonderful uh, um, associating uh, with them and going around and every time learning something you knew, it's a changing world. The world is carrying on very fast. So um, mm, I learned so many things from each and every people, not only Boris, Teresa, but even mainly our common people, from them you get energy and you think that, yes, I have to do something new in the world. Number one point. Number two point, in the beginning, I also used to feel very nervous. So when I started doing exercise in the gym, I love my exercise, health and fitness. And then when I went to different places, I started networking, I started giving speeches on any subject. I used to tell, just give me a subject and I will speak. So I give speeches in the House of Lords, House of Commons on different subjects, even chemical science. And I've, uh, we are working on reviving different languages of the world. When I did this, along with health and fitness, it gave me the leadership and I lost that nervousness and felt myself a single person in this planet Earth who is linked with all other people in this world. And it become quite easy to, in fact, not only meet any human being, but in fact, associate myself with water, nature, and air. And one more thing, I remember a very good saying, which is in Sanskrit, that karmaniya vadika raste ma faleshu karachana ma karampal hetur bhurma te sangos vakarmani, which means that you have to do your duty. You have to do the right to work only, but don't think about the fruits. You will get the fruits. Let not the fruits of action be your motive, nor let your attachment be to inaction. So you do the positive work, honest work, and you will get your fruits. That is for sure. I love it. You know, I'm listening to you and I read your bio last night. Clearly, I couldn't spend, I couldn't describe or share half of what I read because 30 minutes would be done and I wouldn't ask you a question. What do you, what have you observed over the years is the reason why some people can accomplish as much as you and some people accomplish nothing. They just wake up and they go through the motions. I know a lot of people who do this. And if you have a conversation with them, they have a problem for every solution. See, you are Janelin. I am Sharat. You are the self. You have a goal. Janelin wants that I should make a rose garden. Rose is the national flower of US. She wants to make a, become a horticulturist, a rose garden she wants to make. In 1986, President Ronald Reagan had signed the legislation to make the rose the national floral emblem. So what happens? First, you have to understand yourself that, yes, what Janeline wants. And my goal is to make a rose garden. Now, in between, there are three obstacles. Number one is your occupation. Okay. First, you understand yourself, make your health okay, everything. And then you do your occupation religiously forecasting, premising, and planning properly, number two. Number three, if you have a family at your parent side, or if you are married, or if you have a partner, understand your family, give your positive attributes to them. Number four is society. So all the society includes your friends, your siblings, 
all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, when you came to this world, you came from your mother's womb and you knew your mother. She used to provide you the food. So if you are uh, basically dealing with all these hallucinations and four obstacles, self, occupation, family, and society, absolutely properly, with your goal in mind that I have to make the rose garden, no one can stop you. The sooner you become matured in understanding yourself that I am genuine and I want to become the chief minister, prime minister, I, or I want to make a garment industry, or I just want to become a farmer to make corns. So that's it. You will achieve it, I'm telling you, and you will get the best ways which people will be around you and they will show you the right way. So nothing to worry about. Like Nelson Mandela had one told, once told that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So don't sit, keep on updating yourself. See where the world is going. Not only what you are thinking, but what the people around you are thinking, what the world is thinking. It's very easy. It's not like something big labyrinth or rocket science. Yeah. The biggest managers and the biggest industrialists of this world are not someone who only studied from the best reputed colleges. They are simple people, common people like you and me. So that's it. It's quite easy. I love the answer. Now, I have to tell you, <clears throat> when you say it, as you're saying it, it sounds so simple. But what I've observed over the years is when you're on a mission, and you have a goal in sight. A lot of times people are capable of keeping their eyes on the goal. There are some people, however, if they encounter obstacles on the way to the goal, they become discouraged. And they put the tools down and they go, I can't do it. I think the difference between those people and the people like you is when you encounter the blockages and you encounter the challenges, you see it as a moment for strategy. How do I get to the goal? <clears throat> because nothing is going to stop me. Because I am sure along the way, you encountered many barriers. Am I correct? Absolutely. <clears throat> In fact, every second is a challenge and a barrier. Yeah, that is the fun. Think about your life as a chess game, okay? Look at, at yourself in the mirror. Give at least 10 minutes to quietly sit on a chair and think that I have got one more day in life. The sun is there. The moon is coming. The stars are there. I have, given, I have been given one more day in life, yeah? And then in that 10 minutes, think that what you have to do, number one. Number two, those who have become successful in life, yeah, read about them. How did they become successful? The big businessmen, politicians, they were also one day a baby, small baby. From that, they became big. When you read about the positive, successful people, then what happens? You get that motivation. Look at the movies which motivate you. If you meet 100 people in, in the world, yeah, you will come across many people. Out of those 100 people, one person will be there who has helped you in your difficult times or who will give ear to you. That's a diamond always keep near you, that person. Out of 1,000, those people will be only two, three, maximum four. They are your guiding factors. Yeah, And your best guiding factor is yourself. And those books and those continuously update yourself in whatever field you have to do good. But at the same time, do meditation, yeah? And for at least 10 minutes, sit quietly and think about yourself and the world about you. I am telling you, you will feel good. Number one. Number two, look at my face. Yeah, do like this. You feel so nice. For half a second, just smile. Forget the world. Make your mind blank. Everything will be okay. I'm telling you. So you are in the political arena right now in London, in England. And so you are in a place to make changes in the world. The world is facing so many challenges right now. And a lot of it is complications related to COVID. 
many different countries have problems because their economy has been hit pretty hard by this pandemic. Since you are in a position to make a difference, what are you planning to change that will benefit everyone that's in your power within the, co the community and the country that you are currently operating? Based on the British, British values and uh, being but naturally connected to the British government, uh, first of all, I would like to change the factor of understanding that every human being in this world is one. Yes, the thing is that I remember I was the chair of governors, vice chair of governors of a school which has 677 students, yes? So every school in all around the world, it might be anywhere, Japan or US or Norway, anywhere. So every school uh, does their job with regard to teaching, yes? But when we used to call the parents so that we could teach them to give parental guidance to their kids so that they would rise and there are future, the next generation will be good. Will you imagine out of 677 students, seven, eight, 10 parents used to come. So I know around 14 to 15 languages of the world. So what I did that I quietly saw a Sri Lankan or someone from Bangladesh or someone from Pakistan, India or America or whatever, Belgium, Germany. And I saw who was the leader and a friendly person, positive person, lady or man in that. And I told her, can you, in her language or his language, can you please go and tell your fellow parents to come for this meeting? Yes. So what happened? In the next meeting, I saw 157 parents had come. Why I told this is that we have to, now US, UK, or in fact, anywhere in the world, it's full of people from all parts of the world. It's not like before, yes? The world has become absolutely liquid. So we have to connect with the, all the communities in a positive way. We have to see the positive leaders in them who can spread positivity, who can bring unity, who can create peace. And at the same time, we have to see not only US, UK, Japan, and other countries in the world, uh, to only think about their country, but think that how we can assimilate. There are 195 countries, including Arctic and Antarctica in this world. Yeah, Just six months ago, I had a global conference. In one month, I got 87 persons whom I never knew from 87 countries, Be only because I was given one month. Otherwise, I would have tried to got, get 193. So if you are positive and you talk to people very nicely, it's very difficult to connect people. So your master point question, what I want to do, I want to bring positivity. I want each and every person to get educated. I want every youth to get employed. They should get employed in the right places where they want or where the opportunities are there. And I'm telling you, there are opportunities. I will take 10 seconds more. You told like, you mentioned the pandemic, Corona. What is Corona? C stands for courage. O, that you have to be open what you are going through, what is happening to, to you, don't hide. At an early stage, Corona can be managed. Number three, R, R, you have to study the risk factors. Number O, you have to be outright, tell your doctors, people that I am in isolation, I want to get okay. Number N is no, tell your friends and other people, I can't come to parties. I cannot meet you right now. And number A is accurate. You have to be absolutely accurate about what you are doing. And I'm telling, leave out Corona or any other epidemic, smallpox or anything happened in this world and everything will be fine. Corona as itself, things are becoming okay and people are becoming okay now after the vaccination. What's the one that you learned during Corona that you may have been oblivious to about the world and about the people around you and yourself. I had read this uh, book about Robinson Crusoe. 
He was marooned in an island. I read his book. Yes. So I understood the significance of being alone. I understood who I am. I also understood how to connect people virtually, like you are in a space station. Now people are planning to go to Mars and Moon. How will they connect with each other? Yes. I every day walk 10 to 12 miles. Since I couldn't go to the gym, I love my gym. So I came nearer to nature more. When the robin birds, robins were tweeting with one of my friend, Graham, both of us were tweeting like a robin. And the robin was looking at us. What are you doing? So we came to the flora, fauna, birds. Like you see, the national bird of uh, America is the bald eagle. Bison is the animal. You look at them. Yeah. If you don't do anything to them, even snake, they will not bite you. You come closer to the nature. So all these things happen. And I understood the significance of trees, nature, flora, fauna. And then you think that, yes, I need to do something good in this world for the good of them and for the good of people around us. So is it interesting how many things we lived, we, we were going through, we were just every day, busy, busy, busy. And there's so much that we were oblivious to. And then COVID came and forced us sort of into isolation, depending on your unique, your individual situations. And there's so many things that we noticed suddenly that we, they were there, but we were too busy to notice them. So I feel that COVID, although it, it was not good, a lot of good came out of it. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. In the science of evolution, we hear that there were apes. Then we became men or women. So the almighty or supernatural was seeing, oh, you are cutting trees. You are creating more deserts, climate change. The Mount Everest and all these are melting. Glaciers are increasing. Floods are happening. Epidemic tsunami is happening. Okay, wait, you need to take rest. Yes. COVID happened. You had to take rest. Yes. You had to think, what should I do? We hear about civilizations which have vanished, Incas and many more. How did they vanish? Where did they go? Some are below water, below the sea. They vanished because of such kind of change. So there has been a change. There has been a vaccine now in our body. Yes. We are safe. Some people have not taken vaccine. It's their wish. But this, is, this was the time of change. And gradually, gradually, the signs of evolution, we are getting out of this. And post-COVID, we have a new world, a new innovative world, a new people who are entrepreneurs. You will see many new businesses. I know. We already seen a lot of them. And isn't it amazing what we learned we could do sitting in our homes? I was having this conversation with a friend yesterday where in the past, most employers, if you asked if you could work from home because you had a sick child or something, they said, no, you had to come to work because yes. the perception was we wouldn't work if we were at home. And now look, the world survived without us leaving our homes. And apparently some people are discovering that they got more out of their staff from them working at home. It's amazing how the universe forces us into the, the situations that will result in us learning the lessons. Absolutely. Nelson Mandela had told that real leaders must be ready to sacrifice all for the freedom of their people. So the innovators, the scientists, they were busy innovating for the freedom of our people. But the bees and butterflies were very happy. I could see more bees and butterflies jumping from each, from the, each and every, every flower and enjoying their life. And in some places you will see that the animals were outside in the cities and the roads moving around and they were absolutely happy. So yes, as you see that there have been some new things happening and it's frankly speaking, it's for the good of the society and the humanity around us. So 
So that's been absolutely fantastic. I have also not been much outside, but yes, working from home. Then, um, but what happens, you see, many of the companies, that's why they are thinking that instead of spending so much of money in health and safety, big, big buildings and paying so much rent, people can work from home and then they can have outdoor trainings where they can come meet their friends and then go back and work from home, be a part of their family also. People were not having part of the time for their family. Some people meet their family only on Saturdays and Sundays, or maybe if they are working somewhere abroad in few months. So at least they could be part of their parents. Parents are sent to old age home. Previously, they used to be with us, our mother, father. At least people have got the opportunity to stay with them. They can also see their grandchildren play around with them. So many positive things are happening. Negative things are always there. But if you think positively, you become a positive person and think that, yes, there is a reason why I am living. So that's the most important part to think about. Yeah, I am someone who believes that life is 10% what happens and 90% what you do with it. So in the most negative situations, there is a positive side and I try to focus on that. So what is the current state of uh, the COVID uh, situation in, in England right now? Have you guys opened up? Are you still on lockdown? Are you going to continue on lockdown? No, we have um, almost opened up, yes. Two households can meet inside and around 30 people can meet outside. And uh, in fact, I would say the COVID situation is very much under control. Unfortunately, unfortunately, still five to six, maximum 10 of our citizens lose their life. But uh, 30, uh, all, all of them who are more than 30 years of age, uh, most of them have got the vaccines, I would say. So since most people have got vaccines, it's almost under control. Like they have opened everything uh, to some extent. And uh, after uh, June end or the middle of July, things uh, should absolutely uh, open to a much greater extent. Only thing is that they are a bit strict about um, people coming in the country. They have created a traffic light sort of system, red, amber, and uh, like uh, normal light situation. So because some new variants have happened, so they don't want those variants uh, to come. They are still doing research whether it will be okay with the vaccine or not. So otherwise over here, things are under control. Yes. What have I asked you that you want to make sure that you share with my viewers? Uh, the first word is positive. Remain positive. And um, if you have any problem, talk to yourself and talk, have some friend. Yeah, always friend is a very important word. Always have a friend with whom you can share. Nothing to hide about. If you can't share with your friend, then share uh, with someone whom you think it will be reliable to share and nothing to worry about. Yes. So the number one word I would say is positive. Stay positive and remain free of the mind and spend some time every day for yourself. And remember time. For me, the most important thing is time. Presently, we have... Uh, spoken for a few seconds and few minutes, that has gone into history. We can't buy that time in the market. Yeah, We can't buy that time in a motel, hotel, or restaurant. So every second, just enjoy, be happy, and whatever is the situation, try to remain happy and make the people around you happy. I know there are many things about which you might be sad or worried, but there is always a solution for everything. Like we made a vaccine for Corona, you see? Similarly, there is a vaccine for everything which is within yourself. You have to just understand that and go ahead. I like that. There's a vaccine in each of us for everything. Yes. <laughs> I think the biggest blockage that most of us have in our lives is the belief that we can't. Yes. I discovered not so long ago that I can do just about anything. And I will give it a good hard shot. And even when I'm told I can't, I do it. 
but I'm also realistic in the things I engage. Like I know I can't stand here and jump and touch the clouds. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but if it's realistic, I, I usually do it. And if I don't, I won't give up trying. And so I think that has a lot to do with the things we accomplish in our lives as well. And so can you believe we are out of time exactly? <laughs> but, but before I let you go, I want to ask you this. You are originally from India. Are you from Delhi? I am from um, a state named uh, Bihar, but I was born and brought up in the state named Jharkhand. So that is northeastern part of India, near Bengal. Okay. In the foothills of Himalaya. So the language I speak is the national language of, is spoken in Nepal also. And it's spoken near the foothills of Himalaya, which is known as Maithili. And you, you, you indicated earlier in this conversation that you speak 15 different languages. Hats off to you. Thank I can you. barely <laughs> master English. So <laughs> I'm sometimes I mix impressed. up. I'm telling something and suddenly some word of that. So I have to be careful that <laughs> I could imagine how that would happen. My father spoke, I think, five different languages and Sometimes he would be translating for me, but he translated in another language I didn't understand. But you are clearly very successful. And I get why you've done the work and you're driven and you don't allow obstacles to stop you. I admire it's that. It's a game, chess game. You have to just deal it like someone has put a, yes. What are Someone you doing now to help those people in your country? Because India has been hit so hard by COVID. Do you have any plans or anything in place to help the people of your, your particular part of India? Yes, absolutely. There are, they have been continuously sending equipment. There are different charities over here of which I am also part. I'm part of many charities. And uh, in fact, not only the British government, but all these charities have been continuously sending uh, equipments and uh, and other uh, necessary even money and food to reliable we are very particular that go, it goes in reliable hands our friends who are doctors or maybe who are in the right positions so the poor people who are actually in need they are being helped continuously and things over there also coming under control because you see uk may be as big as one state of india india has 28 states around and eight union territories. So you see one state is as big as maybe UK. So uh, managing such a big population in places like India, China, uh, and other nearby places in the South Asian countries is not easy. And thereby they are going, and people have uh, different thoughts that we shall not take the vaccine. So changing that sentiment and trying to tell that, yes, please take, and there are five vaccines which are in the market. So yeah, we have been continuously helping not only India, all the other nearby states, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and uh, all the in the Middle East and also the European countries, we have been continuously helping all the people around, not only India. Yes. On behalf of all the people you are helping and all the people within the communities whose lives are being impacted by your work, I thank you. And I, I hope that someone watching this show might be encouraged to go and help other people as well. I think right now we all need to help each other. I think we always need to help each other because we will have a happier, more prosperous world when we are capable of doing that. Thinking you outside- feel so satisfied. Yes, thinking outside of you and your needs. Uh, Mr. Kumarja, I thank you so very much for carving out this time in your busy day in England. It's evening for you now, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, seven minutes past seven, exactly. So you can have a wish, seven, seven. <laughs> seven, seven, okay. My wish is that we'll change the world and make it better. <laughs> you Absolutely, like it, yes. we can do it. So I thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evening. This was great. And I'm very grateful that you are able to spend the time with me and to help people in the way that you are. 
Thank you so much. My absolute hello and best wishes to all my brothers and sisters of not only America, but all other people who are in need around the world. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. And thank you so much for watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. I always promise to find the best people to share with you. Everyone has had such an inspiring story. So thank you for watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. When a conversation is all you need to be inspired. And I am sure Mr. Kumar Jha has inspired you. And I will see you next time with another fascinating guest. Thank you. Broadcasting from Silicon Valley, California, this is Conversations with Jenny Lynn.